Welcome to Ear Biscuits, the podcast where two lifelong friends talk about sex for a long time. I'm Link. And I'm Sex. I mean, Rhett. <laughs> this week at the Round Table of Dim Lighting, we are continuing on with Sex Timber. It's actually the last episode in Sex Timber. And instead of getting professionals uh, to give us solid evidence based information, now we're turning back to us, just the two guys who make this podcast. We're also turning to you though. We asked you if you had a burning sex related question. I don't think that was a gonorrhea reference. Right, but it, well, it could be. Or a hilarious sex related story. We said we wanted to discuss it on Ear Biscuits. Discuss, we said, it. discuss it. We said you could call us at 188-EARPOD1. You could email us. We made an address so it could be anonymous. We're not gonna mention any names today. And Jenna, if you're willing, we want you to read the anonymous emails so that we could have the sense of it being a voicemail, even though it's just, we all know it's just you. Happy, happy to read them for everyone. Yeah. She's you, happy, happy gonna, to read them. Are you going to do voices or are you going to do Jenna voice? Uh, Jenna voice. Okay. Uh, well, yeah. you, can, you can change we'll your see. mind. I can, I can change my mind. You can okay. change your mind. We'll it's, up, it's up what to you. We'll see when we get to it. It's up to you. Um, do we need any preambles? Of course, just the warning of, this is more specific and potentially explicit sexy, sexy, sex conversation. So if this isn't for you or any other ears who may be in earshot, skip it or put some earbuds in. I would say that I have seen uh, and appreciated a lot of the support that we've gotten for going back into sex timber again and talking about these things candidly. Uh, I got very little, if any, uh, butt plug shaming uh, thus far. Just a couple of jokes here and there, maybe. Um, oh yeah, no shaming. So yeah, I you know we've got a great herd of mythical beasts that they're happy that we're talking about sex again. I do think that they're happy that we we brought in some qualified professionals. So today is our happy ending, exactly of this series. I uh, I'll tell you what I haven't received. Any butt plugs? Well, you know, like what? Uh, Emily was supposed to send us. Well, shipping. I mean, d d she's going to send them. I mean, it hasn't been that long. You know. Uh, do I need to resort to 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 my own ordering devices? Uh, well, first of all, yes, you can do your own sex toy ordering. That is completely up that. to you. But I'm saying I don't want to be just inundated with uh, butt plugs. If I'm gonna get them from. Two different angles. Well, you, you can, know, you kind of only want one angle at a time. If you get too many butt plugs, you can give them out for like Christmas gifts. I'm I sure never I'm knew sure your extended family would appreciate that, that. The butt plug thing would be such a cornerstone part of this sex temper. Well, they make quite a stocking stuffer. <laughs> <laughs> is that what you call it? Your yeah, stocking? Yeah. What is that? <laughs> a turnip? <laughs> <laughs> a Mario? <laughs> a a Mario Super Mario turnip? Turnip? Yeah, yeah. All right. Let's play one first. I I mean, maybe they didn't say their name. I guess we can bleep it. But we're what? not we're not gonna disguise voices. Yeah, yeah, yeah. All right, let's play the first voicemail. Hey Red and Link. This is in regards to your uh, rated R question that you posted on Twitter just today on whatever today was. <laughs> yeah. Um my question to you is if uh you could suck your own joint, would you? <laughs> Go. I was asked this question at my old job, and they were very non-discriminating about who they asked it to. Pretty, pretty open about it. So I was wondering if you guys would be that way too. Have a great one. So it was an interview question. <laughs> they asked this particular <laughs> indiscriminately place of asked work? this question at his former place of employment. Would you suck your own joint? I'm just imagining it's a subway. I don't know why. <laughs> I don't. I mean, I, I just, I just was imagining that question being asked <laughs> openly. Like while, sandwich artists. What while there's a line of people <laughs> waiting to order the uh, yeah. extra mayo, low fat mayo. Don't do the low fat mayo. Um, second of all, the term joint for I had heard penis. It, I had heard it, but I don't dislike it. Yeah, uh, I I knew I, immediately what he was talking about. Yeah, because it was suck your own. Was the first was the preamble to yeah, joint? Yeah, right. Yeah. I don't know, but I mean, you could suck any joint. Like, you, people try to lick their own elbow. Uh, yeah, some people can can successfully. Um. Well, I don't know how to answer this other than I've tried. <laughs> <laughs> 
<laughs> I mean, yeah, I've tried uh, yeah, to. I mean, who I've who who, who hasn't has tried? tried? The people who have. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, it it kind of uh, you know once you discover masturbation, it's it's pretty much like. Doesn't that seem like the next level? Yeah, it's like I can. I, it's like this hand is really well equipped and it, to do a lot of great things. It just dangles right down but there you're next like, to it. What can this thing do? I'm pointing at my mouth. Um, no, not, I'm not a as lot flexible. if you can't reach it. I'm not as flexible as I used to be. Uh, but I'll just go on record and say that I believe probably around age. I, I was at my sexual. Peak and sexual limberness at probably like sixteen, you know, and I and I do remember. Uh, <laughs> it's funny how I feel like I always end up saying something really self-disclosing and potentially embarrassing really early in these episodes. Yeah, and then because you do, I don't feel the need to say anything. Okay, well, because I don't want it to seem like I'm trying to outdo you or compare myself to you. Because I think it's important that your your sexual experience is your own. It's not about comparing. So I think sometimes- well, when somebody asks you if you suck your own joint, you, you gotta answer. I them. said that I've tried, and now you're about to say something else, but I just wanna say, okay. maybe you're a little disappointed that I haven't had as much disclosure this month- No, 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 no. As, as you have. No, I wasn't saying it as opposed to you, I was just saying it's just funny how it just ends up happening in these first questions. Uh, I did make, um, how can I say, I did at one point make Tongue to tip contact, but it hurt really bad. Like your but back, I, but I was your back was so hurting. uncomfortable that, and I, I, did, I mean, I, there was nothing else could happen. It was just like they touched in a moment of discovery and beauty. It's I'm kinda, sure it was not beautiful to look at. It's kind of <laughs> like those those angel babies in the Sistine Chapel, like their fingertips like reaching out to each other. No, that's God, man. That's the hand of God, and I don't know in this scenario if oh, the I tongue or was, the dick is God. I thought it was angel babies. I think it's, no. Aren't it's, angel babies reaching out too? Well yeah, but one of the hands is God. Oh, and the other one's a baby? Uh, I don't know what the other hand is. Yeah. But one of them's God's hand. Yeah, one of these in this, yeah, analogously is if, our tongue if you could suck and your our own, collective If you penis. could suck your own God's hand. <laughs> I'm sorry, I didn't mean to get sacrilegious. Yeah. Don't do that. I wasn't talking about your God. I was just talking about okay. an artistic I was representation about somebody else's of God. the tension of almost touching. So anyway, uh, tongue to tip contact is the best I ever did. Yeah, because you're you're bent over so far, especially with your back. I was thinking that maybe you had more success. I this. remember my back was bent over so far. You're so that, flexible. Like, it, um, it was hurting so bad that like it started, you know, it created a retreat scenario for my member, I was, my joint, as on. you might call it. I was on my back. Oh, you were doing like a backwards I roll? I was on my back and I was folding myself over. Well, listen, around, I guess this was high school when that Tool album came out and when you opened it up, yep. there was a picture and I swear, I don't know, I, I hope this isn't just something that I created in my head that you could move it and it had that like, it was two images with the viewing angle thing and like so it would have an animation and it was a guy pleasuring himself with his, yeah he was doing just this and he was shirtless yeah. and his back was to the camera and he was like, I just thought he was like waddling back and forth and then I realized that no, 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 this guy's achieved something that requires circus level flexibility. I, I just gotta Can say. Can I try this? And then it yeah, hurt too bad. Right, if it was easy, like if, if my penis was my thumb, I probably wouldn't have a job. You know what I'm saying? I, I, I'd be like a baby, <laughs> I'd be like a baby constantly. <laughs> I mean, I'm just gonna tell you right now. If Come I could, man. I would, and if it was easy, I would be doing it all the time. If it and was so easy. I'm glad that it's hard. If it was easy, everybody would be doing it. Right. Nothing. It doesn't apply to this any less than any other scenario where Speaking you can Speaking of statement. God, there's a reason that she didn't put the penis uh, on the thumb. Because she knew that we would all be, you know, sucking our thumbs all the time. I mean, I actually think that's what determines the length of your penis, you know? So it can, you know, if you think that like what? longer's better and maybe you're self-conscious about like 
the the length or of it, then you just say, you know what? It there's it's a formula. If it was too long, you'd be in trouble. Right. If it's too long, you wouldn't have a job. If it was too long, you wouldn't have a job. <laughs> right. <laughs> I mean, I. Yeah. Is there anything else to say about this? I think we've said quite a bit. <laughs> let's uh, let's get a story here. I'm gonna click on this voicemail. Hey, this is Morgan Womack. I wanted to uh, um, tell you about a sex-related story, and I really don't care if you keep it anonymous or not because all everybody knows this at this point. <laughs> everybody I know anyway. So when I was younger and I was dating my boyfriend, uh, I skipped school and went over to his house. And being the teenagers that we were, we ended up uh, in the bedroom. Well... His mom was not supposed to come home from work until like 5 p.m. But when we were in the middle of, uh, yeah, uh, I hear high heels clicking on the wooden floor outside of his door. His mom slammed open his door and started lecturing us, going off on us. Both of us are buck-ass naked in bed, freaking out. I'm crying. I had brought my iPod over to my boyfriend's house. It was set on shuffle. While his mother was lecturing us about our horrible choices, the song Pour Some Sugar on Me by Def Leppard started playing on the iPod, (laughs) and it was across the room. We could not turn it off, so she lectured us to the soundtrack of Pour Some Sugar on Me. (laughs) My husband and I cut our wedding cake to that song. We were still (laughs) together all these years later. So that's my funny story, and I'll never live it down. I still have friends to this day call me when that song's on the radio just so I can hear it. What? Yeah. You guys have a good day. Bye. Well, we are now, Morgan. <laughs> Morgan, Morgan, Morgan. Listen, did did Morgan say that they got married? Yes. Like, yeah, so yeah, 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 there yeah. you go. Yeah. Ma- Mom, you were wrong. Slip inside. Oh. Walk this way. Have sex in front of your mom. Hey, hey. Well, the one thing that she didn't talk about was uh, what happened when they were caught. Because I, I've never been caught having sex by anybody, and I don't really know what the plan is here. But I, I think that if you're okay, let's just go. I'm going to give you a scenario on what I think you should do. If you're um, having sex with someone at their house, like they're like a, they're, you know and their parent, they, they live with their parents, and their parents catch you having sex with their child, their daughter or son, whatever. I mean, not, yes, not, you know. I'm tracking. Then I, you have to stop having sex, first of all. Let's just, let's just say you do <laughs> not finish. Once you're caught, you do not finish. I think that's one rule. But then I think you don't, yeah. r- don't run out. I think you stand up and introduce yourself. I think you extend your hand. If you made your bed, lie in it, but you made your decision, stand up and shake. Sir, it's nice to meet you. You know, you go on, and give a nice, firm handshake. Don't jump out the window, don't go into the closet, because you, you are still making your first impression in that moment. And it's like, well, you know what? He snuck in here, he had sex with her daughter, but uh, he gave me a nice, firm handshake. You know, and I like, wouldn't you, touch, there's, there's I wouldn't touch any parent. Fist bump. Like, what about just like a nice, assertive wave? Like, point and snap. Hey, just a little wave? I'm not, don't touch. I don't want to be touched. Yeah, that's true. I didn't think about that. Yeah. No physical contact. I think with a fist the, bump is okay. With the parental figure. Unless you've been fisting. <laughs> I mean, I <laughs> and would. At that point, hush then, it, yourself. Then, it, then, it could, then it could be a real hush. problem. Hush. I. <laughs> listen. I'd be in that closet before with two clicks of the. You go in the closet. They, it's you, you can't. It's like an ostrich putting its head in the sand. You're still in the closet. You just can't go make in the it. closet. Yeah, it just makes. I think it you got to just take it and be like. I mean, at least you could then grab something out of the closet, put it on, and come out. And I do think putting on, maybe uh, putting a uh, some sort of like. I, in fact, if you dresses. got a sheet, quickly apply it like a toga, and then you just look like. A history buff. Oh, we were, you know, we were actually doing our Greek homework. Yeah, that's right. This is role play. <laughs> yeah, it is. Mm-hmm. <laughs> we were in, we were in the bath, <laughs> the Roman bath. There's no penetration. 
What do you mean? There's no penetration in I, a Roman bath? No, no, I'm just saying, I'm going along with it. Oh. I'm saying you gotta say, you gotta tell the parents there's no penetration. I mean, I've, as I've established, I've been seen through a window by hikers, but I've never been caught by someone I knew. Uh, I've almost been caught by, um, by a child who just came in. You gotta make sure that door's locked. Well, put yourself in the, in the shoes of a parent. And let's say you come home and you find one of your children um, having lovey time with a significant other. Yeah. What, what, what are you gonna do in that moment? What would you do? Um, I would, I, w- I would not, I, well, I try not to burst into doors and catch people do, ki- well, kids doing anything. True, but let's so just say if, accidentally, if, you knocked, you didn't, they, I would they didn't hear you. I would immediately leave, right. and then I would say, let's discuss right. this later. Discuss this later, that's that's the, the funny yeah, part I mean, of the story, is that you gotta like, obviously they're probably not gonna finish after they've been caught, like you, you mission accomplished, you stop them from having sex, whatever, you close the door, and then you just go and sit in the living room. And just wait. I would take a jog, probably. Well, I would like. Yeah, but you don't lecture them in I'd the probably, moment. I do have a punching bag in my in my garage that Christy got years ago. When was the last time you punched that thing? Um, I've never punched it, but I think this would be the perfect occasion. Yeah. So that's where I'll be. I'll be out there just punching the daylights out of that thing. Okay. And just trying to figure out how I'm going to keep my cool afterward. But yeah. also, it's a natural process. What was happening? Uh, you you hope that it's happening in a way that is responsible, and yeah. I think that's that's the that's the way you want to have the conversation. It's because it sounds like in this scenario, maybe Morgan's parents didn't know that she was having sex yet, or whatever you know. Yeah. But if you're like, oh, my kids are sexually active uh, in a in a relationship or whatever, and you know that they're having sex, then catching them having sex is kind of a is different. Than this right. this being your you know realization that your kids are having sex right it's it's so difficult to decide to start talking openly about sex, especially with like your first child, you know if you have multiple children um because it it I, unless you unless you're in like a really open household where you just discuss all these things and like you make sex references all the time, even before your kid can understand what they're talking about. So they never can remember a moment when you weren't making some sort of sexual reference. Just kind of like, oh, I remember watching this sitcom for years and then I, I got to an age where I realized that they've been making sexual references the whole time. That's kind of a nice way to just kind of make it part of what you, the, 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 communication climate in the home, but practically speaking, for a lot of people, including me, that never happened. So it's like, with the, with the now that my kids are, I have older kids and younger kids, there was this different dynamic of, you know, you're referencing things and we're making a decision to kind of like, s- the fact that sex exists and it is, the, and they have an opportunity to do it, it's like, we might as well, it's it's counterproductive to like never speak of it. And then the younger siblings, they just kind of get, they kind of absorb it in a way that inoculates you in a good way to it being something we can never talk about, it's a taboo. But with that first child, at least, I'm oversimplifying here, you have to make this decision and it's hard to not do it too late. You know, I think it's a little bit, a little bit goes a long way, and it's better to start a little early than too late. It helps when your kids are begging you to tell them, which is what happened with Yeah, Locke. which we talked about last time, but yeah, Morgan, uh, sounds like it all worked out for you. Yeah, congrats on the marriage. Jenna, let's get to an anonymous email. Would you like a question or story first? Let's go question. Okay. Uh. Doesn't like sex, how can I spice it up? Hello, longtime fan, first time emailer. Okay, I have a sex rate related question that might be TMI. I've been Great. with my husband for seven whole years, and while I hate to admit it, our sex life is boring, sad, predictable. 
I even once told him to please don't love me in the bedroom. Do you guys have suggestions how to spice it up or just how to initiate that uncomfortable conversation? P.S. We're both huge fans. All the best. I asked my husband to love me everywhere but the bedroom. Please don't love me in the bedroom. I is say first stop saying that. <laughs> <laughs> well, yeah. Step one. I guess. I guess what they're getting at is, you know, foreplay starts out of the bedroom. That's not what I heard. What did you hear? I want to. They want to have sex somewhere else, like not in the bedroom. No, I heard that they are not having a very active sex life. Well, I heard that too. Um, and for for whatever reason. And, but the thing is, seven years is that it sounds like there is a desire to have a more active sex life, and maybe they're both on team. Let's have more sex and let's have a more satisfying sex life. I think one of the things that we learned in talking to the Doctor Emily's, Doctors Emily, right? Uh, that's when you say attorneys general. That's how you say it, right? You know, the Doctors Emily is um, that. It's and I and I have a tendency to do this. I have a tendency to normalize my situation and my behavior, and then sort of say that this is what it, the way that it should be for other people. And I'm as I get older, I'm learning to do that less and less. And one of the things that they both hinted at was this idea that there's not a normal amount of sex or whatever. Mm -hmm. um, but if you are both on team, let's have more sex. That's a good start, right? Because that's a, that's a place that you're like, oh, we're not as satisfied as we would like to be. So, because uh, you got to communicate it to some point where where you where you can get on the same page to know what the next step is. And then if you're on that page, then okay, well, what does that look like? How do you spice it up? How do you have more sex? How do you have love me in the bedroom time? That's kind of what I was hearing there. I yeah, I I think the best advice here is. You know, get the Come As You Are book, read it together, discuss it. I mean, there's even a workbook if you're into that. I I just think that that will go a long way. As I was reading it in preparation for our, our last conversation, Christy reread it. She had already read it years ago, and I never read it. Because mm -hmm. as with a lot of books, she's like really into um, the nonfiction self help reference material type stuff of what whatever she's into at the time. Um, and she'll always say, I want you to read this. And you know what, I never do it. I just say, just tell me about it. Just tell me about it. Give me the blink version. Just give me the let's, give me the active sex version yeah, of it. Yeah, like, yeah. you read it, now just show me. Yeah, what do you want me to do? Visual yeah. aids, welcome. <laughs> right, um, but reading it separately but then talking about it together was really beneficial and it, It'll get you more horny. Giving you a giving yourself a structure, and especially one that is specifically designed to talk about sex and to talk about right. things that maybe you're not informed about from a professional standpoint. I completely agree, and it doesn't have. That's a great. That's a great book. But there's also other books, and I'm sure there might even be books that I don't know about that are designed for people in this exact situation. Just you know, Google book for a couple that wants to have more sex, whatever. Uh, I, in fact, I think that um, I think that Emily has a uh, mm -hmm. uh, Emily Morris, Doctor Emily Morris has a book about like two hundred things you can do tonight, right? Yeah, oh, that's and then, a lot in one night. Yeah, and then Doctor Nagoski is coming out with a new book as well, right? About keeping things fun for long term relationships. There's yeah. so many it's resources a common thing, out there, so don't don't feel don't yeah. don't feel don't feel weird about it, but um, just discuss it. And make it, in, make it into a little happy project. Yeah, play, pour some sugar on me. See what happens when you do that in the bedroom. Or just pour some sugar on I, each you know other. What? I've never done that. See what happens. Straight sugar. Straight sugar. All right, voicemail. Hi, Rhett and Link. Love you guys so much. My name's Sarah. I'm just curious. I was such a fan of Sex Biscuits last year. And I know... Rhett and Link, both of you guys, but I feel like I heard it more from Rhett, um, addressed the issue of vibrators in the bedroom. And I am a young woman, and I would love to use one in the bedroom. And I'm just curious how you think a woman should approach that subject with their man. 
Hmm. How to introduce that? You know, I, I feel know. like some men might be right. opposed to it, but I think a woman might very much enjoy it, as I would too. But yep. thank you so much if you answer this. Love you guys. Have a great day. All right. We thank are going to answer it, so she's going to love us. I, You know what? I actually think that my guess is that many fewer men than you would think are actually like uh, threatened by a vibrator. I think that most guys are turned on by it. I, again, I, I'm speaking for most people at this point, and maybe I'm making a mistake here. I'm just saying that as somebody who likes to think that I can get the job done, and I'm proud of myself in that area, I don't. I don't see a vibrator as a threat. I see it as just a little, a little sexy twist, you know. Uh, and also, you know, I'm into modern technology. Yeah. You know, I mean, the fact that we live, what a time to be alive, you know, that these things can exist, and sometimes they can really just get the job done. I think using a vibrator on your own is can be a, a very viable way to figure out what works for you. And then if that's why you wanna bring it in there because it's like, hey, this this can help us, this can help me when we're together, you know, and then your partner can learn from it. I mean, it, it it's a great thing. I'm a fan of the vibrator being a part of the uh, excursion. Oh yeah. Um, because it, it just helps. You know, and you can use them at the same time. You can use a vibrator, which, or your partner, she can use a vibrator, and then you're still uh, penetrating. So, like, both, it's it's a two for one. And if you're worried it's a two about, for one. if you're worried about the, first of all, I just think the simplest way is just to be like, hey, ask the question, how would you feel about it? And I think you might be surprised by the answer. Like, I think that's hot, is what I think most guys would say, but. If you're worried about that, here's one way you could do it. Mm -hmm. um, take, a, I'm holding a giant vibrator. Take a, <laughs> take a vibrator, uh, take a toothbrush, uh, cut the head off of the toothbrush, glue the toothbrush part to the vibrator, and then just start using it as a toothbrush <laughs> for, I'd say, four to six weeks. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. And he'll be like, that's one hell of a vibrating toothbrush. You'll be like, yeah, it's a new thing, new tech from Colgate. I don't know, just throw a brand in there, it makes it seem legitimate. Oral B. <laughs> <laughs> and yeah. you you hold it, like it's gonna be different. Oral than those, D. <laughs> <laughs> it's gonna be different than those ones. But then he'll, it's like when you're trying to get a dog to be like accustomed to the crate that they're eventually gonna be in. First yeah. thing you do is you just set it in the room. And then they're like, okay, this thing's not a threat. Maybe I'll get in there one day. You gotta slowly <laughs> get a man, you have to treat a man like an animal sometimes. Yeah, And you just you let him know, this thing's not a threat. That giant pink toothbrush that she's been enjoying for the past six weeks, it's not a threat. Next thing you know, she's got it in the bed. And he's like, oh, brushing your teeth early. And no, and then you just demonstrate what else you can do with it. And I think he'll, be, he'll go along with it. Yeah. Uh, if it's not about the threat, but it's just about this feels weird. Um, maybe you're, maybe there's like a grounded version of that advice that actually works. Cause I do, th there's truth in what you're saying. It's like you, you, you find a way to ease into it. I mean, you know, I don't know exactly what that is, but like, cause for us, we talked about last, last year, we both, you and I went and bought the same vibrator. No, we both bought the same model of vibrator. The green worm. But we each had our own. We didn't like have to loan it out. No, you shouldn't do that. Like, like don't share have it. a sign up sheet. Um, and then remember, I put I put the mask on Christy, and then I I I, I broke it out and just started poking her around around different places. <laughs> not even, you know, I surprised verb, I surprised her with it in different, not just um, down there, but yeah, under the arm. Just like it was, <laughs> it was just like it was just a fun little playful thing, but like. I, I did spring it on her, and I I don't quite recommend that. But it was my idea, and it was just like, hey, I got, and I did say I got I got something, may yeah, just one one idea. I'm trying to develop some freaking advice here. Cool. I'm trying to land on something. Take a playful approach in a neutral setting where you can have a conversation about it, 
and you can make it a little sexy. Just like, hey, I, I had this idea. What if, what if we um, use a, use the vibrator next time we uh, have sex? Just think about it. Just give him, just, give, just give him a beat. Just logging it. Just, just think about it. It's just an idea. Something to, just something to make more fun for both of us. We let's make more fun together. You ever touched yourself with a vibrator? Uh, yeah. It doesn't quite do. It's a little. It's no. like, it can be a little overwhelming, but at times, you know. And it's it's nice to have sex and have your partner control the vibrator, and then it's like there's a communication about like what's too much. If it's like if there's a couple of things going on at once, and then you need like all right, let's reduce it to one thing at once, and then the other thing, and you get to a point where it's like because talking about like. I think it was mentioned over the last two episodes. Well, masturbating in front of your partner, a mutual that seems, masturbation that's, sesh. I mean, when you just say it, that seems so weird. But then really? it it does as an idea, as an abstract idea. It's like we're going to walk in this room and then we're going to each like pleasure ourselves while we watch each other. It's like but practically speaking, it's something that can just find its way into happening. And then you find like, oh, this is just another way that we can play together, even though we're playing with ourselves. So it's, it's not all this start, let's decide to do this. It's more of like, let's have an attitude of play and an openness to know what, the, what, are, the, what are the toys that we can use here? What are the, what are the things we can try? And you just kind of keep it open-ended and just make it, a, make it an adventure. And you just see what happens. And try certain things, some things don't work, you can kind of pull back. You can just take the battery sometimes, right out of it. And sometimes you, you'll surprise yourself. When you're in the heat of passion, the things that you say and the things that you do, it's like that's part of the fun of it. It's just like, wow, I'm so, I, I, there's, I didn't even know I had this in me. <laughs> you know? It's, there's like a release of not just sexual tension, but also personality. Release your personality in the bedroom. Yeah. Here's a story. So I have an uh, embarrassing uh, sex-related story. Um, it was actually from when I lost my virginity. Now, to most people, this might sound like a dream, but it, in fact, was not. I lost my virginity in a threesome. What? Yes, a threesome. Now, what made it so bad? Well, let me tell you, I really didn't know what to do with my hands so well. The two lovely people that I was also with were kind of going at it. I was kind of sitting there. I just started doing the cha-cha because I had no clue what else to do. And they looked at me. I was very embarrassed to the point where um, things went soft. So, yeah, that's my sex, my sexy, sexy, embarrassing story. Um, yeah. Um, oh, my gosh. <laughs> <laughs> what, is, what does the cha-cha actually look like? Is it like this? No. It's footsteps. It's, it sounds like he was standing up. And he was standing it, up. Yeah, it's like a little. Like forward and backward. Yeah, forward and back kind of <laughs> step. <it. laughs> wow. Thanks for sharing. Um, but I do believe virginity was lost. We didn't. I, I don't believe. Well, we don't. I don't believe. Not in virginity the, to the cha-cha. I don't personally believe in the loss of virginity. I don't think there is. A, we talked about this. That's too. true. I don't believe that you have something that you're losing. Sex was had. For uh, the first time. For the first time during a threesome. Wow. That's bold. I, that's yeah, I bold. That. I've never, I mean, you can, again, in the heat of passion, you can find yourself in interesting situations, and it's nice to be able to access some sort of game game plan. The cha-cha, call like, it your personal and it's, cha-cha. It can't, can't be the awkward cha-cha, I mean, I've never come anywhere close to having a threesome, you know, as we firmly established. I've only had sex with one person, and that's firmly. Christy. Um, I don't, you know, it's, oh, man, I don't, I yeah, I don't, I wouldn't know exactly, you, you know, you, not, you get know, in where you fit in, but that, sometimes that's not obvious. I, I, now, my assumption here is that the people who were the other two members of the threesome probably did not realize that this person had never had sex before. 
I'm not gonna give advice, much advice about threesomes because I don't have any experience, but it just feels to me like it would be a good guideline to be like, um, maybe that's not the best way for someone to lose their virginity or someone to have sex for the first time in the context of a threesome. Uh, that's just, you know. Especially if you're not a good multitasker like <laughs> Uninformed me. opinion. It, feel, it feels like chapter two at the earliest. Yeah, talking about jumping in the deep end. Um, wow, that's, uh, you know what? I mean, and again, any a little sense of humor goes a long way. I think if you if you're doing the cha cha and they're kind of like laughing, it's just you know you're just trying to own it. Just well, to I have it. to assume that that them looking at him doing the cha cha was the thing that were like, oh, well, do you want to? Would you like to be a part of? Do you want us to dance as well, or would you like to do what we're doing? <laughs> and that was probably what preceded the the moment. Here's another question. Hey, Rhett and Link. Uh, this is anonymous from Texas. Well, I have this question after listening to your sex episode that you just had. And uh, coming from a similar background as y'all with the purity culture, evangelical upbringing, I would be curious to hear an expert talk, perhaps somebody that might know, pain and embarrassment around stamina lasting long and whatnot. So short of taking the little blue pill, I'm curious uh, if y'all have experience with this or if you have any experts you know that can talk on this. Be blessed. Um, any experts in the room? Uh, nope, but we can talk about stamina. I mean, stamina is really built up as this thing of like, and I do feel this um, culturally, not not in my specific bedroom, but culturally this pressure to like, you know, to to go long and strong. And you, when something is, can be as fun as sex, it's like, yeah, you wanna, you wanna, you wanna, you don't want it to every time be over with in a flash. Yeah. You wanna be able to draw out the experience and, um, but e even speaking specifically about like the old in and out, like you get to the actual specific the in and out of sex, and at a certain point, you'd like you'd like for that particular action to be to go on for a while, but that's difficult the thrusting, to do. The thrusting, the thrusting the, is the old cha cha is difficult to maintain. I mean, in in my experience, you know, you get you so you find yourself mixing things up. It's like, all right, we're gonna I'm gonna do that for a little while, and then I'm gonna do something different. That so. You know, we're still very much much engaged, but it's like, all right. So we you switch gears, but also you switch practices. Yeah. Right? And for you sure. can go back and forth. So that's one thing. Now when I started um my anxiety medication, I read about with onboarding of of a medication like that, that you could have sexual side effects and that they at a certain point, when your medication leveled out, uh, it will it, it, that would level out too. And I I did experience that. So well, at what, first it was yeah, it was like I'm everything's taking longer. It's taking longer for me to get an erection, and then it's taking longer to reach climax. And there were a few times that I did find myself uncharacteristically in my head about, well, hold on, is this gonna, am, am I gonna be able to pull this off? Am I gonna be able to complete the task here? And yeah, that I could see how that would lead to a downward spiral and just like everything would fizzle out. Um, but I also experienced this middle ground where I was able to go longer and so we had a different experience. Well, actually, this is interesting Which was good. That, that that this guy mentions uh, the blue pill, you know, Viagra or, and, or Cialis or and whatever. And now, just, just to finish my trajectory, it did get to a point, I don't know how long it took, that it was kind of like, I'm back to how I was before I was on the medication. I don't, I don't feel like there's actually And that's not necessarily, I, wh okay, what I have heard from multiple sources is that, okay, so one of the reasons that we have this, uh, this 
obsession with stamina is that a lot of us get our ideas about sex from porn, and obviously the average dude in a porn can like sit there and thrust with multiple women in multiple holes for like an hour. And that is not what I, and we don't use the term normal, but I'm gonna say that is not normal for me. <laughs> um, but what I have been told is that most of these guys doing porn, and to correct, correct me if I'm wrong if you know the, the, the ins and outs of this, <laughs> is that these guys are mostly all on SSRIs and Viagra or Cialis. Is one of the is one of the ways that they're able to maintain that. Cuz I don't necessarily think it's always the case that first of all I don't think it's bad. I think that I think that, that this is a positive side effects of SSRIs. Is in my opinion, if you can, if it makes you last longer as, as long as, as, as it long doesn't as you, don't, you don't lose the erection. Right. Um yeah, it was a good experience. It kind of opened up um yeah, a, a different a different avenue. And I'm not prescribing this, I'm just saying that this is an interesting tidbit of like if you combine the SSRI, which you shouldn't just take SSRIs for reasons other than to treat a, a, you know, clinical depression, uh, you know, a, a diagnosed disorder from a psychiatrist. But it's an interesting thing that they're d doing both of those things in, in some cases where they're giving themselves the ability to go for a long time without losing the erection because of the Cialis or the Viagra. And maybe they're not just super troopers who can go for an hour, but maybe there's some some medical assistance there. Two data points for me. I talked to my dad about this on Dispatches from Myrtle Beach. You know, it came up in conversation because I was asking him. He he said he's used it, and I was like, "Yeah, but what are you talking about? The erection that lasts for like twelve hours?" He was like, "That's four hours." That, that That's happen. what the ad says. If your erection at lasts for more than four hours, um, call a doctor. So he he's he. He had some success with it. Success. Oh, I'm. I've never used it, and and uh, but I definitely don't think that there is any shame in using it. And I think that, uh, and when I'm talking about like some sort of ED, you know, assistance kind of thing. Right. But definitely. If it the moment that I'm like, I feel like I need some. I'm making the call. You could do it online. I'm, I got. There's no shame in that game. It's like again, just like what a time to be alive. I met a friend for lunch. He was a friend of a friend, and we were kind of getting to know each other. Um, you actually don't know this person, and um, middle aged guy. And we were talking about vacation. We were talking about like vacation sex or something. And he was like, "Hey, I'll I'll give you a." He's older than us. I think he's probably, he's in his 50s. And he said, you know what, we'll schedule a day and I'll, I'll, take, I'll take one of the pills and then we'll just, it, it's just, he was like talking about it like it was miraculous. Like he could just go and go and go. And it was like, he, so he was like giving me the inside scoop. He's like, hey. My only fear about this, because it is a documented, it is documented that for some men, um, using that kind of assistance when you're already healthy and you actually don't need it in order to have successful sex or you know to to maintain an erection, uh, can do something psychological where you become dependent on it. I'm I I mean I'm sure plenty of people use it in the way that this guy is describing, but if it's just like oh now do I need I would be worried and it, again it is documented that for some men they they feel like they've become reliant on it in order to get it up and keep it up. Mm -hmm. And so I've just thought to myself, because I've thought about it this exact same thing because I've heard multiple people talk about this. Like, hey, you're doing this anniversary weekend and you've got a hotel or whatever, bring some Cialis along with you. Because I think, because one of them, I don't know, one of them is like, hey, take it now and you'll be ready in 30 minutes. And one of them is take it and you'll be ready all day, like for all day, I can't remember which one is which, so do your own research. Um, but I've, the one that's like more acute, I've thought about that, but the thing that's kept me from it is this fear that, oh, it'll be so good that then I'm gonna feel like I'm gonna become reliant on it, and then you can have this psychological effect where you actually do have trouble, because it's so mental. I mean, maintaining an erection is such a mental thing, um, which again. Proceed with caution. Yeah. And also, you know, maintaining the stamina can be a mental thing, so one thing in addition to changing it up, it's like, oh, that feels too good, change it up. You can also just think about Richard Nixon. Um, 
you know, you just picture tricky dick. You just picture someone that you're not attracted to. In my case, that would be Richard Nixon. Like Richard Nixon represents like I. There's nothing about Richard Nixon that I'm attracted to. Now, I, I don't want my wife to know that. Hey, you're having a great time. I'm thinking about former President Richard Nixon. But hey, whatever it takes to keep going. Well. I, I would just be afraid to find myself start to have a, a Nixon uh, fetish. <laughs> you don't want to associate your wife with Richard Nixon. I, it hasn't happened so far with me. All right, let's hear another story here. Hi, Ren Link. Um, I'm going to keep my name out of this because it's pretty embarrassing. Um, but I have a pretty weird sex-related story. Um, my ex that I was dating, um, unfortunately, for about three years. Um, one time we had just finished sorting the mail mm -hmm. and we were cuddling and um, he decided that it would be funny to scoot up on the bed and uh, pee directly on my face. Um, I genuinely was so surprised in the moment and had absolutely no clue what was going on. But um, yeah, we we broke up a couple months after that. So um, unfortunately, shouldn't have been with him that long in the first place. But you know, hindsight is twenty twenty. Anyways, uh, super excited for sex temper. Uh, love you guys. Bye. Well, what the flying hell? <laughs> I'm sorry this happened to you. I mean, consent is paramount. I don't. I don't. Besides that, I'm I'm just a I'm I it makes me angry and I don't want to talk about this one. It, besides that, it makes you angry? I mean, I don't besides saying that, I have nothing else to say. I mean, obviously, this was this was a big no-no. Uh only because of the fact that she would because of the cons consent thing. But let's assume well, let's let's talk about peeing on people while we're while we're here in the subject matter. I mean, cuz I want to talk about that a little bit. I'll let you do that if you want to, but it's you don't have to. Um, yeah, I don't have any experience with this. This isn't something that I have. Like, I'm just saying. Like, let's say that this situation was. We're talking about a golden shower. Here. I was. If, if the story, it does have a name. If the story I was, guess some people are into it and they consent to it. Well, you call it, but don't. Okay, you said it. Some people are into it. That sounds a little kink shaming. Some to me. people are into everything. I don't. Yeah. So, yeah. Um, I made it about consent. Uh, yeah, well, and so, but I want to talk about this in general, though, because if this isn't something that has presented it now, again, we've established before that uh, my wife has, squirts. <laughs> uh, I established that on a previous episode, and we know that at least some of what's happening during the squirt is it is urine. There's other stuff in there too. It's complex, not completely that well understood. But I guess in that sense, I have been peed on in some some regard, but it doesn't it doesn't feel like that in the in the moment. It isn't like, hey, right, pee on me because I want you to pee on me. Now, I'm not saying if you want if that's what you want, that that's what you want. If that's what you want, you gotta be on the same page. And if you are, go for it. Go for it. Uh go. but I don't see this being something that uh, I'm gonna a request that I'm gonna get from Jesse for me to pee into her face. <laughs> uh, but you know what? If she asked me to, I'd be like, "All right, I this feels weird." And uh, but if you want me to try it, let's try. I don't even. The thing is, is I feel like I might even be a little. I might get too uh, gun shy in that situation. Sometimes it takes a lot. Like I could be next to somebody at an airport, and there's not a divider between the two urinals, and I have trouble just letting it go. You know what I'm saying? I I, I get a little stage fright. I, I think I think the psychology of this is part of the appeal for those who are into it. You know, so That's being a, able it's, to just it's, let loose. Well, I, you know, <laughs> obviously Link really wants to move on, and now I'm gaining pleasure in not letting him move on. Um, read an email. <laughs> okay, <laughs> just moving on. Uh, I agree. Consent. Consent. Yeah. Yeah. Um, he's he. That's a shitty person. For real. Yeah. Yeah. But yeah, if people like the peeing thing, definitely go for it. Have fun. But that's not cool. Mm -mm. 
Okay, got a story. Uh, <laughs> here's a good one. Uh, the person did put their name in the email. Uh, well, let's just leave it we'll off. We'll leave it anonymous. Okay. Dear Messrs. Rhett and Link, I humbly submit the following story for sex- September 2022. It's the story of my first time with a girl. She and I met at my college dorm. Our chemistry was strong, so strong that we decided to take it to my dorm room. We're making out. It's getting hot and heavy. You know the meatloaf song, Paradise by the Dashboard Light? Yeah, like that. I don't that. like that song, but yeah, okay. Mm-hmm. It was like that, apparently, yeah. Uh, as I'm about to sheath my penis in a condom, good. suddenly my dorm's fire alarm goes off. <laughs> It was, <laughs> it was like the stop right there part of the aforementioned song. We both panic, grabbing whatever clothes were on hand. We followed the rest of my entire college dorm outside into the cold, pouring rain of early March. <laughs> we were both miserable for a minute, but then burst out laughing. We've been together for 13 years, and we got married in April of 2020. Thanks for listening. Congratulations. Another success story. <laughs> I wonder if he unsheathed it first. Okay, I I feel bad about giving this advice, uh, but like ninety nine percent of all college dorm room fire alarms are fake. You know what I'm saying? Like I don't want don't. listen. I don't want you to get burned up in a fire, and I'm sorry if it happens to you. But I'm just gonna go ahead and tell you right now. Most of the time, that's just some wad just pulling the fire alarm for a prank. And sure, it, sure, take that risk. And no, I'm just saying. If it's it were on you, me, Rhett. if I'm not giving the advice, I'm just saying if it were me. First of all, I'm glad that it ended in success, and now you're married, so you worked for you. But I'm just saying, put me in that situation. I'm in a college dorm, and not not now, <laughs> not 44 year old Rhett, but back in the day, Rhett. And I'm and I'm sheathing it up, and I'm ready to go. And then the alarm goes off. I think I'm going to be like, hey, listen, statistically speaking. This is probably not a real thing. Let's not stay out in the cold. Let's stay here and screw. That's probably how I would have handled it. Let's make it quick. This is exciting. We can actually do both at the same time. We could evacuate (laughs) and... What do you mean by evacuate? Evacuate. Evacuate is like a term for like oh. pooping, which again, well, just like no judgment. Ejaculate. We can evacuate and ejaculate. If the consent is involved and you want someone to poop on you All right. during let's, a fire alarm, let's get another voice, man. then that, that is your right. Hey, Red and Link. Uh, big fan, Sean here. Uh, just curious, uh, have you guys ever dealt with post-nut clarity? Because uh, that, that's rough. It's a, it's a rough ride. Just immediately afterwards, when you you're done doing your thing, you just sit, sit in celerity, and just kind of think about life. So yeah, uh, just kind of curious on that. Kind of curious on how your personal clarity has changed over the years. <laughs> so yeah, thanks guys. Love what you do. Peace. Post nut clarity is not something that I've ever heard named, but my the only way really? I, I relate to it in that like. I guess it's akin to like when you ejaculate, then it's just like there's the trope of I've totally lost interest, like, or it's over. Like I can just roll over and go to sleep, or whatever. No, no, this like, is this is a like well established phenomenon. But like being sharper mentally, no, I I can definitely relate to like jerking off and then being really um, feeling really guilty about it. Well, at, a, think, at a young age I, in the I, environment I, I grew up in. it's more, uh, I, I, what I've always understood this concept to be is just like, I was thinking with my other head and now I'm thinking once again with my brain head. And usually I, you hear this in the context of like, oh, I was you know having sex with somebody that I didn't really want to or I was being driven by my sexual energy in a way that then once it was released, I was like, well, how the hell did I get myself in this situation? Like regret. Yeah, and then in the context of like porn, if you, you picture like the quintessential like teen who's gone down a rabbit hole and who's some just, you know, you're, 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 you're watching like 80 Russian elderly ladies have an orgy or something. You, you're really way down the, the, okay. the rabbit hole of porn and you and then you think to yourself why am i watching this and wh- how have i got to this point right after you masturbate 
That's how I've heard okay. about it. And 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 but but I, I remember this as a teen, especially as a teen in purity culture who thought that masturbation was wrong. And so then you right. would be like, oh man, and now I see how wrong this is, and I'm praying about right. being forgiven. It sucked. It was horrible. That but, so that version of clarity. But I but this isn't much of a phenomenon as a middle aged man at this point. So I don't think I I don't think I've been yeah. like harnessing my post nut clarity. I think I've just been going to sleep. I mean, I'm definitely gonna t tell Christy that like sex makes me smarter for a limited time. Yeah, right. So it's like that's some that's thing that's something I haven't sold. It's hard much. to talk yourself into making long term financial decisions right after you have sex, but apparently that would be a good idea. Let's hear this story. Hey, Rhett and Link. I had an encounter with a lovely woman I recently met, and we hit it off great, had a few dates, and we eventually ended up at my place, and basically the mail was going to be sorted, and she paused and looked at me and specifically asked to not have her socks taken off at any point. I obviously agreed and whatever, but, I mean, What's the deal with socks staying on during sexy time? Jenna, you're having a reaction to this. I I am. I from a my viewpoint of it is is that she perhaps uh hasn't had a pedicure in a while or there's like uh an ingrown toenail that she's embarrassed about. I don't see it as yeah. like there's uh, some practical reason that there's it, a practical reason she wanted to keep her. It's so cold. Or just yeah, or her feet get extremely cold, and she doesn't want to like shock him with her freezing feet. I yeah, and the fact that she said it's up front, like I don't see a big deal with with the socks thing no. at all. I no. find it kind of se sexy. I mean, I find it sexy when a woman leaves her shoes on. First of all, because if then knocking it, the boots, because then it feels like an athletic event. It feels like we may be being scored by judges. You know what I'm saying? Like if you got on <laughs> shoes, and again, I mean, I think the sexiest thing, and this is probably like some um, uh, unresolved misogyny, is I love women in high heels. Uh, I'm working through that. Uh, but you know, there's are a, you there, there's, there's there's a class You're sitting around working on. <laughs> I'm trying to like I'm heels? trying to like naked ladies in high heels less with every day that passes. Uh, but it is, is it not a sexy thing? Do you find it, a, is it a sexy thing when a, when a naked lady in high heels? I just love socks, man. Um, I love stockings. But I do believe that- To me it's not about the heel, it's about, it's about the fabric of the calf. But I also think maybe I have a disposition, uh, a bias towards this because my wife is 5'3 and I'm 6'7". Yeah. So heels actually, it, you know what? In my case, women wearing heels is all about equity. <laughs> it's all about us being closer to the same height. <laughs> to your uh, height. <laughs> closer, Why don't you just closer. bend over more? You see, head. I just made it a very progressive thing. <laughs> uh, but here's the thing. I kind of think that maybe like wearing like some Air Jordans or something, like wearing some cross trainers, wearing something that makes you feel athletic. Like, listen, if there is a fire alarm, we'll be the first ones out there. Both of you put those kinds of shoes on, and like maybe that. a headband and wristbands, gloves even, things that make you feel like you're going to work, doing it, something that matters. Anything that like makes it different can be something that can make it exciting. A trucker hat. Yeah, and especially if if you're getting to know your partner and and they, you know, you gotta acknowledge that this is a point of um, putting themselves out there. There's a risk involved in saying, hey, I did, you know, I don't want to. Don't take my socks off. Be like, you know what? I love your socks, and I'm so glad you don't want to take them off. I got more socks. We Let's can put, double you, them. You want to put him? I, can I keep my socks on too? Yeah. It's like everything's an opportunity to just get hornier. Yeah. You ever worn you know? just a belt? Like, it, yeah, it, no. Yeah, well, I haven't either, but it just, it struck yeah, me let, as that hey, might be let's cool. just wear belts Look, We just have belts on and nothing else. Yeah. I mean, why not, right? How do you have the best sex? Belt. <laughs> Like a utility belt? It's it's got a all... utility belt, has got all oh, the little yeah. vibrators and stuff in there. <laughs> pew, 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 pew. <laughs> you be like Batman up in there. <laughs> so yeah, I mean, you wanna, you wanna turn everything into a turn on, and when somebody shares more of themselves, that's a turn on, double down on it. Don't, don't, don't question somebody's uh, 
somebody's request if it can be easily accommodated. I mean, you don't want to put up any barriers. You know what I'm saying? Jenna, do you have another uh, email? Yes. Uh, this story uh, I have thoughts on. Um, here it goes. Uh, are you ready for a pathetic story? Huh. My first boyfriend and I had breakup sex. He lasted 30 wriggly seconds. <laughs> then he got wriggly. up, farted, Whoops. and asked if he could have my Diablo 2 account since I didn't like playing it anyway. I said no, then he left, and we never saw each other again. Believe in fairy tales, people. <laughs> <laughs> uh, yeah. Well, were all three of these things related? I mean, maybe they're just all, it all just coincided. Short amount of sex, a fart that was un unanticipated, and oh, while I'm thinking about it, Diablo 2. You know, we are grouping these things together, at least in the context of the story, as if they are related. So maybe we just go with that. Yeah, I, I just don't know about, like tying up loose ends, like ending a sentence in a in an exclamation point, but it's a fart after sex. I just, that's weird, man. I mean, it's it's a little flagrant. It's a little flagrant, mm -hmm. you know? Flagrant foul. Don't bring farts in, into the into the bedroom if you can help it, or well, unless it, you're into it, it. Unless it's, your, it's asked for. Yeah, um, yeah. Or what maybe, are your thoughts? Maybe, uh, I, I think he probably should have asked about the Diablo 2 account before the sex and farting, or if he was asking about it after, I, I think he should have put in a bit more effort into the sex part if he was going to ask this big thing. Right, yeah, read the room, man. His ex-partner, <laughs> yeah, right. read the room. But yeah, I, I think in if that was my ex that I was having breakup sex with and that happened to me, I would think the appropriate response would be, well, at least your farts last longer than you do. Oh! And then skipping, like that is so. Dang, that's hard to remember though, in the, in the moment. In the moment that you're. good. If in that the happens, moment you're probably. You. I, I think in the moment I'd just be kind of like, um, okay. It's it goodbye. could be a text later. <laughs> a text later. Break up No, text. no, immediately blocked. I'm like, At you know what? I, I want to completely forget this entire you do. I mean, the whole not lasting a long time in, in for breakup sex, that's not surprising. Because if you think about it- my, You taking up for this guy? No, no, no. I'm saying the step one, the first step is, I don't think that that's where he went wrong. Because what I'll say is, I don't, I don't have this experience because I've only had sex with one woman and we've never broken up. Uh, but if you, if like my wife goes out of town or I go out of town and you get back together, sometimes that first reunion, you don't last as long because mm -hmm. you're super excited, right? Yeah. And so if you've broken up with somebody and you haven't had sex in a while, like you got, and you hadn't like done the old um, something about Mary when, when you kind of, you know, get one out of the chamber before you get together, uh, which I do recommend. Um, if you haven't done that, you might only last 30 seconds. But in that moment, after you, this is where post-nut clarity really comes into play. If you have lasted 30 seconds, and you're like, I think I would be like, oh, I'm sorry, you're just so hot, or something like that, you know? Yeah. And then if I had to fart, I wouldn't, because I'm, at least at this age, I still can not fart when I don't want to, most of the time, not everybody can. And I don't play Diablo. I didn't play Diablo 1. So nope. that part, I, I just can't, at that point, I, can, I just can't relate at all. I, I feel like I, the first step was, you know, how he responded after that, that first slip up is where he started going wrong. After Jenna's comeback, <laughs> I got nothing to add. That it, was amazing. I, I think feel it like, just all feels very great. intentional. Like he went in knowing it was gonna be short, he was gonna do something yeah. gross, and then he was gonna ask about some video yeah. game. Like, I'm not a fan of this person. No, yeah, no, yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah. I think it's good they broke up. Wow. But we have one last voicemail here. No. Oh, that's not it. Right down there. Hi, Rhett and Link. I have a very funny story in response to your sex September tweet um, about my poor friend when we were babies in college. We weren't literal babies, but we were very young people, uh, 18 or 19, and she had, <laughs> sorry, it's so funny, um, never uh, given a blowjob before. And she uh, 
had started dating this guy and they were about to, you know, go all the way. She was telling me all about it and how she wanted to try to give him a blowjob that night. And so the next day I asked her how it went and she was like, I don't know, it was kind of weird. I don't think that he was super into it. And I was very confused. So I said, what, what was he not into? What did you do? Apparently my poor sweet friend uh, took the, the name blowjob very literally. Oh. And so she, you know, went down there and just was blowing cold air on his genitals for a solid two or three minutes before he finally was like, yeah, no, we're not doing that anymore. They went on to go do other things. And my poor, sweet angel friend uh, was horrified when I told her what that, what actually a blowjob entailed. Um, so it was pretty funny. This is why sex education is important, everybody. Yeah. Uh, and that's all I have to say. Bye. That's why I call it a suck job. You know, <laughs> you just let's just get it. Let's just say what it is. Oh my gosh! Just, I mean, was it? Makes a was, great story. Was there a distance there, like blowing from a distance? I or feel like, like total, like a total, like get on it and then blow it up like an inflatable, yeah, tube. If I was horny your, enough and I hadn't had sex in long enough, I feel like you might be able to get me with just air. You know what I'm saying? With like, if it was like a, that would a be pneumatic a, thing, a fun precursor. But like, if you're if you're latching on and then you're just you're you're blowing. I mean, is it? There was no latching. Will that go to the urethra? Will that go up to the bladder? Oh, you're saying if could you, the bladder explode? If you yeah, if you blow it like that wasn't what was happening in this scenario. Like, this was like blowing from a distance. Blowing up a balloon. You don't want to do that. Yeah, that can cause <laughs> that can cause a lot of issues. I totally thought um, that I, I'm in that poor um, girl's boat. I 100 thought, you? Uh, yeah, 100 percent thought that a blowjob meant you blow on a penis <laughs> from a distance. <laughs> from a distance. <laughs> but did, but uh, you, so you, you I, don't I have to answer this question if you don't want mortified. to. Mortified. But did you ever? Did you have a similar experience, or you just this was a thought that you had? I had a similar experience. <laughs> <laughs> you don't have to answer it, Jenna. You don't have to answer it. She already did. It's okay. Did. I've she done a lot a of embarrassing experience. things. We're good. <laughs> We're good. But yeah, I, I, uh, yeah, I, I blew it... on my boyfriend's penis, and um, I thought that's what a blowjob was. And then how did that? What then? What? Um, it was very awkward. Thank. Uh, <laughs> We moved on quickly to something else. Right. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. And um, then I learned later. Later. That that's incorrect. He probably just thought you were creative. Like oh, I was wow. creative. We're like we're just Literal. like trying out something new and fun. She's got a different take blowing on Blowing around the area, like I think I blew on his balls at one point too. Yeah. Right. Gosh. Okay, Jenna. <laughs> yeah. 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 I mean, yeah, it's like. You can blow anything you want to. So you can blow. Yeah. 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 yeah, yeah. Like I could blow. Yeah. 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 It's like yeah, I've got breath. <laughs> I've seen a birthday cake before. Oh, Lord, if I, yeah, yeah. <laughs> I know what to do here. Wow, 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 wow. <laughs> Sorry, too much info. <laughs> okay. Okay. But you, she is not alone. Her, that yeah, that, yeah, that yeah, woman yeah. is not alone. This Been there. This concludes <laughs> well, listen, our, I mean, our September. The fact that this was a story from this woman and then you uh, had the same experience. I mean, this is not an uncommon thing. Why is it called a blowjob? Why, why I even call it that? Like. I don't know. It's like a, it's a really. I, I just don't know. I just don't know why. Yeah. I, I, can't, I can't. Of all the words that it could have been, that's the the phrase that won out. Right. I don't know why. There's a lot of sex terms that don't make sense. Yeah. But this one is one that just feels like a real, real miss. I mean, fellatio is just a really great name. That's just a technical term. Uh. I don't know why why it would ever be called a blowjob. I guess because it's like, oh, it's just my, my I'm it, it it's explosive. I don't know. I think you're making a your mouth looks like you might be blowing. You know, maybe the first time someone saw somebody doing it, I was like, I, I think she might be blowing on this thing. <laughs> uh, I mean, I'm not the right. one there. This is so a I third party it was like a, it analysis. Was, it was a doctor watching a video. <laughs> it's like, oh, she is now blowing on his penis. Uh, he seems to enjoy it. Blow job. <laughs> <laughs> she looks like she's working. Blow job. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Why yeah. is it a job? <laughs> like, yeah, exactly. Like no one wants to right. do it. Right, right. <laughs> That's yeah. the other part I don't like yeah, about yeah, it. Yeah. Like it should be a suck favor. 
A lick, you know what I'm saying? Fantasy. It's like, yeah, it's it's it, not just suck. You don't want to suck too hard either. I don't. I don't want to call it a suck favor. Call it a. a how, it's like a tootsie pop. How many licks does it take to get to the? To get, yeah. right. get to the but if you have to, I mean, like, yeah. Don't bite. Yeah. I don't know. Gently, gently. What's a word for sucking on something with an intention to lick on it, not just to like suck on it? Like I, don't, I think there's probably a German word for it. I think. Uh, what about more of like a. Sloppy savor, uh, savory. Uh, I don't know. We know. Uh, we, we all know now. I think we'll just go with blowjob. Let's go with blowjob. We'll job. go with blowjob and just take the funny stories as they come. <laughs> <laughs> wow, I am. I am exhausted. <laughs> I am totally just. I don't have a recommendation. Well, we don't I, have I, to have a recommendation because we we talked to two incredibly insightful doctors yep. who have incredible resources. You know, we talked about uh, in, sex with Emily, the podcast. Follow go, her go, books. Fo- follow them. We go got for it. That's Dr. Emily Nagoski's uh, book, "Come as You Are," which we've already wrecked one time in her book. That's Let's coming do it out. again. So just you know what, check out their resources. You we you, we have to tell you multiple times. You have to hear something. You have to hear the gospel nineteen times before you make a decision. Like. Mm-hmm. So uh, you're hearing this wreck multiple times. Next week, we're going to be having a special listening party for a very special, is that it? Yeah. Is that it? That is what we're doing next, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. A special listening party, party <laughs> for a special, <laughs> I can't talk anymore. I told you, I'm just, I'm burnt to a sexual crisp. Yeah, so this coming week. a special project. This coming week, a couple of things uh, will happen. Uh, actually, when you, when you're hearing this, my new single, Give a Damn, just came out this past Friday. If you're listening to Ear Biscuits when it comes out. Uh, and then uh, on the 23rd, the whole album will come out and we're gonna listen to the entire thing yes. right here and hear Link's uh, analysis of it. Yeah, it's like a, like a, uh, it'll be a little listening party for us. Come come next week. In the meantime, hashtag well, Ear Biscuits. I just will say, what? say you'll it. get more out of next week's podcast if you listen to the full album. Beforehand. Beforehand. Yep. So James and the Shame. Good point. Human Overboard, 11 songs. It's out it there. takes you less than 45 minutes or so. To listen to the whole thing and then we'll talk about it next week. Uh, in the meantime, we do want to hear your responses. Hashtag Ear Biscuits, 188-EarPod1. Hi, Rhett and Link. It's Amanda. I love listening to everything you guys do. Even as a lesbian woman, having sex with only her wife. Sex timber is something we both enjoy and gives us a lot of uh, new information that sometimes we might want to try. (laughs) So thank you so much for doing all that and thank you Jenna for adding a female body uh, into the information. Hi Rhett and Link, this is Trang, longtime listener, first time Ear Biscuits participant. You guys mentioned that nobody has ever gotten sick from blue balls before. And I just wanted to let you know that my boyfriend did make a visit to the ER for having what I like to call blue balls um, since he had free fluid in his balls that were really painful and he just rested for a couple days. Hey, my name is Jake. I'm from Philadelphia and I just wanted to thank you both, um, give some appreciation for mentioning asexuality in the latest episode of uh, September. Uh, I'm asexual and it's something that you don't hear about ever. Um, really the only reason it took me a long time to figure out is because you don't hear about it. So just even a small mention like that means a great deal and for you guys to treat it very legitimately and not like there's uh, something wrong with the person or like it's a medical issue is it, it feels great. Hey guys, uh, this is Summer and I just need to thank you all for um, September. Like it it has been something that I've been listening to with my husband and because of it, my husband and I have had the best sex of our lives. We were already open and talked about sex before, but it's just created even more conversations. And I really think that you you guys need to be thanked for it. And so thanks again for Sex Timber. Love you guys. Can't wait to listen to the next episode. To watch more Ear Biscuits, click on the playlist on the right. To watch the previous episode of Ear Biscuits, click on the playlist to the left. And don't forget to click on the circular icon to subscribe. If you prefer to listen to this podcast, it's available on all your favorite podcast platforms. Thanks for being your mythical best.